Yeah, that's a very good question. So many things. It's just so many things, so many and so little at the same time. It's like a time paradox between what could be and what is, but not being able to infuse the two together. And if they do come together, it's not quite what we wanted at the time of when it was required after the... Yeah, so I've been thinking uh, from when Snappiness uh, James uh, did his video in regards to what should be the next Pentax lens. I do agree with him that 5135 uh, 2.8 PLM would be great. And then Eddie Summers did a response video in response to Snappiness's video. And I commented on that video saying that uh, one thing I think Pentax needs to do is actually, oh, you're over there now, <laughs> is look at their lens lineup and see what the highest selling lenses are. And those are the ones that they should focus on completely renewing by adding uh, either DC motor lenses or straight up PLM. And uh, yeah, this may upset some people that love the limited series. It's a fantastic series, very unique and very highly sought after um, with adapters, even for mirrorless and whatnot. People all over the world, no matter what brand of camera they shoot, they have a lot of respect for the limited series lenses. So when I say this, I'm not trying to diss any of the limited lovers out there, but it's just looking at the bottom line of the business itself. So say you have a 31 limited, but a 35 2.8 actually sells more Then what they should do is drop the 31 limited and just revamp the 35 into a PLM. Uh, or, uh, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, the 77 limited, but the 85 is more popular or, uh, you know, the 42 limited, but the 55 DA star is more popular, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's very hard to figure out where Pentax should go, uh, you know, at, at this point, but they need to do something because as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think as of right now, Pentax has extracted, uh, pretty much the maximum that they can do with the camera body. So in regards to autofocus, which seems to be everyone's priority outside of megapixels, I think the megapixel thing. It's starting to kind of wind down a little bit just because we're at a point now where there's so many megapixels, it's hard to edit the actual images and storage space as well, even though people say, you know, storage space is cheap, you know, but even with that said, you know, the megapixel, oh, it's 64 megapixels, oh, it's 100, ah, you know, there aren't many people flocking straight to those just for the megapixels. It seems to have shifted over to the autofocus. And with autofocus, just like Eddie Summers had stated in his video, uh, you know, it's two halves that come together as one, right? And when the lens and the body work in perfect harmony with each other, like a marriage on a beautiful sunset lit sky. Anyway, uh, when the two of them do come together, that is what will actually dictate how well the autofocus actually works and even though the k3 mark iii does improve screw drive uh lenses in regards to their autofocus and you can actually use screw driven lenses for tracking birds and things like that it's still not as fast as plm or a well designed dc motor lens so in my opinion i think going forward what pentax needs to do is drop screw drive altogether only have DC and PLM. You know, one of my subscribers uh, did actually mention that uh, they should look at the uh, ultrasonic drive, which in Pentax speak is SDM. It's the exact same thing. Supersonic drive motor versus ultrasonic ring drive motor. It's the same thing, just different acronyms for the same technology. Uh, now with the amount of SDM failures, I don't know if that's a good idea. Pentax seems to struggle with nailing a proper ultrasonic ring motor drive in the lenses 
with a zero failure rate. So I don't know if I would suggest that, uh, but a well thought out DC motor, like for example, the DFA 15450, does a great job of autofocus and it is a DC motor lens. Obviously the 55300 PLM at this point, everyone is more than aware of how lightning fast the lens focuses. Uh, you know, and as well as the uh, DA Star 1650 PLM, lightning fast autofocus. However, in regards to uh, DSLRs, I still, I still don't think we have reached the very, very end of what can be extracted from a DSLR camera. Uh, you know, my my favorite example is an automotive manufacturer uh, called Koenigsegg. You, if you haven't heard of them, you need to look it up. Uh, the combustion engine has been around for over a hundred years, right? So even though it's been around for over a hundred years, this one very, very, very tiny company, Koenigsegg, yes, they make ridiculously expensive cars, but it's a very small company. They went back and ripped apart everything that entails creating a combustion engine and they've literally rewritten the entire rule book of everything i mean their latest uh their, well some of the innovations they had and then i'll get to the latest one and th this ties into what i think pentax really should focus on uh what koenigsegg has done is they got rid of the camshaft um you know, with their free valve technology. So the engines can be built more compact, it's less components, uh, you get better fuel economy with way more power. They have a, uh, what was it, a two liter, three cylinder engine, uh, twin turbo, three cylinder engine with uh, 600 horsepower, something insane. Um, you know, with lower emissions and, uh, you know, better fuel economy than, other three-cylinder engines. I don't know. It's just, it's insane. So that was one thing they did. They created another vehicle that has no gearbox. It's set in one gear, still one of the world's quickest accelerating cars with one of the world's highest top speeds for a vehicle. And it has no gearbox. It's just one single gear. It's a matter of how it multiplies the torque, you know. So there's that. And then his latest one is a full automatic transmission with an actual manual that includes a clutch pedal. So you can have your full out manual with a clutch pedal or full automatic. You know, so he's gone and actually looked at all the components individually to see what can be improved on. Do we have the technology now to make this a reality? And I think that's something Pentax really needs to do, at least with the camera bodies. Uh, you know, the lenses, yeah, just get rid of screwdriver altogether. I mean, screwdriver's been around since the 70s, 80s. <laughs> you know, like it's it's been long enough. It's time to move on. Drop that. If people want to go buy used uh, screw-driven lenses, the camera bodies can still support it. That's fine. But stop producing lenses that are only screwdriver. It's we're way past. We're way beyond that. Um, you know, I mean, that's if they don't want to change the lens mount to create a whole new format. That's, you know, that I think that would be the smartest move they could do. And look at what their highest selling lenses are to start work on improving those ones with newer up-to-date focus motors. Uh, in regards to the camera bodies, I think they really... Oh, right. Uh, they really, really, really need to take a very, very, very careful look at all the componentry. Uh, you know, as much of an advance the K3 Mark III was compared to what we were used to for a Pentax camera, at the end of the day, it, I still don't think it's enough. There's still a lot more that can be in, extracted. Uh, you know, the, the technology that we have now is absolutely incredible. Uh, you know, like, better implementation of the eye autofocus and tracking and all that stuff. Yes, I know mirrorless does that, but it also has to do with the autofocus module, right? And, uh, you know, the deep learning and the programming of the camera being able to recognize certain things within those autofocus areas. So the capability is there. It's investing enough to be able to make that a reality. 
um, you know, faster drive, uh, you know, a different way to do the mirror. I mean, they, they've started that and who knows, maybe the K1 Mark III will have some crazy new technology that we just haven't seen before. Who knows? But if a really tiny car company can completely and utterly rewrite the rules of what we thought was the, you can't go any further with a combustion engine vehicle and they completely rewrote the rules from the ground up by analyzing each and every single component. Uh, I think that is something Pentax really should do moving forward in order to become the innovator that they once were. Because you have to remember, they were the first with automatic exposure capability with TTL. They were the first with autofocus. You know, I mean, how do you go from being the first of all the things that we come to just take for granted for decades now? And now you've completely fallen behind. Like you can't rest on your laurels. You've got to keep innovating. You've got to keep looking at everything and rewriting the books. But that's it. That's what I think uh, Pentax should do moving forward. Uh, if you were Pentax, what would you do? I'm curious. What would you do? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, I'll leave that info at the bottom of the description. If you like the video, leave a like. If you haven't, please do subscribe. Always helps out. Uh, over 75% of the people who view my videos are not subscribers. Wow, that's a lot. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. So if you have any ideas of what you think, you want to voice your opinion, leave it in the comments below. That's it. You'll see me on my next video. I'm out.